Hello everyone, I am Completado April Ace and I'm gonna share with you my assigned topic which is the part 2 narcotics which is the anopioids analgesic. In this topic, we are going to talk about the indication, contraindications, clinical effects, mechanism of action, and adverse effects of the major classes of non-opioid analgesics that is used for the management of pain. Non-opioid analgesics encompass the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or the NSAIDs and paracetamol or the acetaminophen. The NSAIDs include acetylsalicylic acid or the aspirin, dipyrone or metamizole, and numerous other drugs in diverse classes. Non-opioid analgesics such as acetaminophen NSAIDs and salicylates may be effective therapeutic options for chronic pain control for a variety of indications. Acetaminophen is one of the most commonly used non-opioid analgesics that is available in the variety of over-the-counter and prescription products. Now let's talk first about the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and these are its agents, which is the ibuprofen, diclofenac, indomethacin, naproxen, peroxicam, meloxicam, ketorolac, solindac, and aspirin. Next is its mechanism of action. It's re it is reversible inhibition of the enzymes COX-1 and COX-2. It decreases the prostaglandin synthesis. Aspirin is the exception because it leads to irreversible COX-1 and COX-2 inhibition. Its clinical, clinical effects is that it is analgesic, this NSAID, antipyretic, anti-inflammatory, or anti-rheumatic, and it has minor antiplatelet function, which is with the exception of the aspirin. Its side effects of the NSAIDs or the anti-inflammatory drug are the following. <coughs> Excuse me. Gastric and duodenal ulcers with a risk of gastrointestinal bleeding and perforation or the inhibition of COX disrupts the production of protective gastric mucosal prostaglandins. And also, it increases the risk with duration and dose of treatment. The prophylaxis is the administration of proton pump inhibitors. It is also increased the risk of heart attack and stroke, of course, with the exception of the aspirin and aproxin. It has also an, a side effect of renal function impairment, where prostaglandins normally maintain renal blood flow by inducing vasodilation of the afferent arteriolis. The non-steroidal and anti-inflammatory drugs inhibit prostaglandin production, which leads to harmful hypoperfusion of the kidneys and reduce GFR. Also, the electrolyte and fluid abnormalities, or the edema, hyperkalemia, and its etiologies include thiazide, diuretic use, adrenal insufficiency, and syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion. And its manifestations include altered mental status, nausea, vomiting, muscle, muscle weakness, I mean, and hyporeflexia. If severe, it can cause seizures, coma, and death, and also hyponatremia. The risk of an ulcer is 10 to 15 times higher if NSAIDs and glucocorticoids are administered simultaneously. Now, now let's move on to its indications. Acute and chronic pain, particularly in musculoskeletal, that's a rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory arthritis, Kawasaki disease, acute gout attack, post-operative pain, dysmenorrhea, headache and migraine, also fever, and indomethacin, which is the closure of the patent doctor's art 
bacteriosus. Its contraindication is the gastroduodenal ulcers, the acute hemorrhage, especially for the aspirin, renal failure, recent myocardial infarction, unstable angina, heart failure. Surgery, it must uh, discontinue the non-steroidal drugs one to three days prior to surgery and avoid NSAIDs during pregnancy because NSAIDs are contraindicated in the second and third trimester as they may cause premature closure of the ductus arteriosus. Furthermore, they can inhibit uterine contractility. Now let's move on to the selective COX-2 inhibitor. Its agent is the drug silicoxib. Mechanism of action, reversible selective inhibition of COX-2 with almost no inhibition of COX-1. The COX-2 is found in the cells that mediate inflammation and pain. Uh, for example, in the macrophages or the leukocytes. Vascular endothelial cells or the cells that vasodilation, vasodilation, vasodilation or uh, relaxation of smooth muscle cells that line blood vessels which decreases vascular resistance and increases blood flow. Also the vascular physiology, the hemodynamics. Its clinical effects, uh, the selective COX-2 inhibitor it is an analgesic and anti-inflammatory. Its advantages in comparison to non-selective NSAIDs, no antiplatelet effect, yeah, where the platelets only possess COX-1 and are therefore not targeted by selected COX-2 inhibitors. This means that the activity of thromboxane A2 or TXA2 is not interrupted or the TXA2 normally promotes plated aggregation. Gastric mucosal cells express mostly COX-1, which is involved in maintaining a healthy gastric mucosa. So there are minimal gastrointestinal side effects and lower risk gastro gastric ulcers. And gastric ulcer, an ulcerative lesion in stomach lining, typically manifests along the lesor curvature of the antrum. Less common than duodenal ulcers. Risk factors include helicobacter pylori infection and chronic use of NSAIDs, often asymptomatic but can present with upper abdominal discomfort. For example, the pros the postprandial heaviness, early satiety, and knowing epigastric pain. Side effects. It increased the risk of thrombosis, the MI, and or stroke, or sulfa drug allergy, and it has uh, renal side effects in at-risk patients the deterioration of chronic renal failure and worsening of hypertension. Its indication is a rheumatoid arthritis, the osteoarthritis, acute pain, non-rheumatoid joint pain, especially as an alternative to non-selective NSAIDs for patients with a history of peptic ulcer, disease, and plated disorder. For example, the Glanzmann thrombasthenia. Its contraindication first is the severe heart failure, recent myocardial infarction, gastrointestinal bleeding. Gastrointestinal bleeding is where a condition of bleeding in the gastrointestinal tract further subdivided into upper gastrointestinal bleeding, the esophagus, stomach, and the woodenum, and the jejunum, ileum, and colon in the lower gastrointestinal bleeding. Next, uh, let's, let us move to other non-opioid analgesics. 
which is the acetaminophen as an agent. Its mechanism of action is that it reversibly inhibits cyclooxygenase, mainly in the central nervous system. It, an, it inactivated peripherally. It affects, its effects or the clinical effects is that it is an antipyretic, analgesic, and no anti-inflammatory effect. Its side effects or adverse effects Minimal gastric side effects, and it has a hepatotoxicity due to acetaminophen overdose. Minimum toxic dose is the 7.5 gram per day in adults, leading cause of acute hepatic failure in the U.S. Its pathophysiology is the exhaustion of hepatic metabolic pathways causes Increased formation of a toxic metabolite of acetaminophen in acetyl p benzokinonimine or the NAPQI. The glutathione initially inactivates the N acetyl p benzokinonimine, but its reserves are eventually depleted, leading to the build up of the NAPQI. The NAPQI is reversible oxidative hepatocyte injury causes liver cell necrosis. Its indication is a fever and pain, is good tolerability, preferred analgesic or antipyretic drug during pregnancy, and is preferred over aspirin in pediatric viral infections because it has a low risk of causing. Ray syndrome. Its contraindications is the severe liver impairment. So to to summarize all, non-opioid analgesics. It includes non-NSAIDs, the selective COX inhibitors, and acetaminophen. The NSAIDs and cyclooxygenase, or the COX one and COX two thereby disrupting the production of prostaglandin N, and it is an important mediator of pain and inflammation. Consequently, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs possess antipyretic, analgesic, and anti-inflammatory effects, and are particularly effective in the management of musculoskeletal pain, just like the rheumatic disorders, inflammatory joint pain. Its side effects include gastrointestinal ulcers and bleeding, increased risk of heart attacks and renal function impairment. The severity of these side effects is often underestimated because most non-opioid analgesics are easily available over the counter. The selective COX-2 inhibitors have similar effects to non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs but it show a lower risk for gastrointestinal side effects. The acetaminophen possesses antipyretic and analgesic effects, and it is the most commonly used for over-the-counter oral analgesic drug. So it is generally well tolerated, but overdose can result in significant hepatotoxicity with the risk of acute liver failure. Addiction. Clinical observation and experimental studies have indicated that a single exposure to morphine could induce tolerance and dependence. Recent study shows that prolonged ventral tegmental area or VTA dopamine neuron activities and opiate receptor desensitization followed single morphine exposure. This may underlie the development of dependence and tolerance that may associate with an acute analgesic tolerance and acute addiction of morphine. So, this is my source, the non-opioid analgesics, AMBUS. The, yes. Thank you so much for listening and God bless all. Thank you so much.